very beautiful people. I'm Tracy Rigdon. And I'm Shelton Hall. This is the Contrast Project. Wow, we've got a good show lined up today. Yes, we do. We've got Joe Snowberger, the publisher of uh, Liberty Life Magazine, coming That's on. Right. And Hope McMath, uh, founder of The Yellow House. That's right. She's a great show. Great people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great time this holiday season. You know, we've had a very uh, rough year. Everyone has across the country, across the world. Absolutely. But now we're in December and we're wrapping up nicely. It's, I'm very gratified on a personal level to see how many of my friends and my family are doing okay. Yeah, you right. Know, when, when life happens to us, uh, I say personally, like if it's something happening to me, I'm okay if I'm having a bad time because I'm, I'm a free man in a free society. Right. So any problems I have are the results of the choices I make. Mm -hmm. But then when there are people that I care about, friends, family, and they're hurting or they're catching this pandemic stuff. Right. And and there's nothing you can do about it. That's very that's very irritating. It's, it's hard to sit back and watch mm -hmm. someone else suffer and, and yeah. know there's really not much you can do about it. Yeah, and I'm but I'm hoping that in this month of December, this is a time that our friends and our family in this community and around the country and around the world can really take a moment to exhale. Right. And, and mourn what's been lost, but also get your strength together for mm -hmm. 2021. Right. Uh, and that's, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about in this first segment, too, is community involvement, mm -hmm. you know, gratitude. Those kind of things. Yes. I, I didn't want uh, you know our core audience to think that you know all that we talk about is politics. Right. You know because that really isn't you know where we're going. Um, it, it, we just happen to be having yeah. a uh, you know yeah. a real you know, upheaval in the well, you know our current administration both locally and nationally. Yeah. So it's you know it was a topic on everybody's mind and yeah. we talked about it. Absolutely. Uh, you you happen to be a real uh, you know buff with you know, government affairs and politics and that kind of thing. So uh, we stuck yeah. with that. But going forward, uh, and that, that reflects on the last couple of guests that we've had. Sure. People that are involved in the community, uh, people that, uh, you know, give of their time, uh, whether they be salaried or not. Yeah. Uh, uh, people that uh, go out into the community physically, you know, and give back help people with, you know, whether it be art or whether it be, you know, food drives or, you know, clothing drives or, you know, that kind of thing. People yeah. helping each other. And it's a, it's a great thing. I think it's something that we all know in our own lives. Whoever's watching this, listening to this, just when you see people just doing the right thing, mm -hmm. like this sort of happiness. Like after a year like this, I, I was driving down the street few days ago there's a there's a house like a few blocks from my house that always has like the uh, Christmas lights up they're always the first to put them up mm -hmm. they're big and I and I just saw them randomly while driving by I almost shed a tear <laughs> because it's I like to see that people are doing okay right, right. you know and, and what we've been doing with this contrast project is uh and the thing about this is you and I are close friends, mm -hmm. have been for years. And right. we will, we talk, you know, we were talking shit to each other for a hundred hours <laughs> That's before right. the first episode yeah. got laid out. And you, you know, you, you brought us in here and it's a great thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a great thing for everybody. The current communications technology allows for people to, whether you're musicians wanting to engage the fans directly, right. or people wanting to talk to your friends in other cities, other mm -hmm. countries. As shady as social media is, <laughs> I still have to give it respect because there are so many people in my life that I would have never known. Right, right. Would have never met, or friends from high school, mm -hmm in middle school, in elementary school, right. that I would have never known or never got to get back in touch with if it weren't for social media. And and the, you know, like we're talking about uh, 
uh, the community involvement, community engagement, mm -hmm. people that do it on a regular basis, mm -hmm. regularly volunteering, or yeah. they have organizations, uh, 501s, and that kind of thing, uh, they use social media predominantly to get their message out. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them may have an advertising budget, you know, uh, but a lot of the volunteer people do not. Yeah. So they rely heavily on social media and, and platforms like this. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll, they'll, you know, start up their own YouTube channel or, yeah. or they'll do, you know, live videos on Facebook or Instagram, mm -hmm. you know, and they connect with their, you know, their core group or the people that support them. Yeah. And it, it also, it helps people to, to know when something's going to be coming up mm -hmm. and they, they can get involved in it. They, they may not have even known about, uh, you know, a food drive that's going on or yeah. a clothing drive or something like that until they saw the post on Facebook. Yeah. And then they, you know, they respond and then they show up. So it's it's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful, and that's and and I see us, uh, and and we are planning that. We're we're kicking it up a notch, going into 2021, going into the new year. Uh, we want to hear from people. We want to hear from you, uh, what we're going to be doing in the future. You know, what people you want to see on the show. Yeah. Uh, what kind of questions do you want us to ask them? You know, uh, do you want to have musicians on the show? Uh, we plan on doing some of that. So it, it's going to evolve over time and just get better and better and better. Yeah. And we want all of you guys to stick with us. Uh, Those of you out there who haven't been on the show yet, you can be on the show in the immediate future. And then your children who are looking at it years in the future. That's right. After you've recorded it, hello to you. <laughs> Thank right. you for your support. We are here... Uh, Contrast project. I mean, I'm gonna do the best I can, but I feel like we're here for the next hundred years. That's right. That's right. You know, we're gonna be around once it's once it's on YouTube. Some, it's there. Yeah, it's gonna be somewhere. <laughs> it's gonna be there. You and, know? and like I said, we want to hear from you. Uh, send us uh, if you go to our Facebook page. Yeah. You can send us a private message, or you can just do a post. Yeah. Uh, you can send us, if you've got pictures or flyers of, of an event you want to talk about, yeah. give us a shout. We'll have yeah. you on the show. Our uh, our, our producer, Guy, uh, G-U-Y, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so it said to me, like, how do you spell his name, G-U-Y? How do you pronounce it? Is it pronounced Guy? I'm like, no, it's like pronounced Gooey. <laughs> like Gooey uh, Duck? Yeah. <laughs> no. But what we've been no. No, it's it's a uh, it's guy at Intergalactic Domination Studios, mm -hmm. and we're proud to be here. We're proud to have this product yeah. coming out. Uh, and the best is yet to come. Uh, it, uh, the best is yet to come. Trust me, we've got a lineup going into 2021, into season two, uh, star studded. That's what I'd call it. Star studded. Star studded lineup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to do our best to provide you with the best content, yeah. quality content. Some of it may be salty. Yeah. <laughs> In 2021, someone's going to be here wearing a cape. And it might not even be me. It might not. Might not. Might not even be him. No. You know? No. We're, we, we're going to cover as many diverse topics and subjects as we possibly can. Yeah. And, and it's not, uh, it's going to be. Predominantly local, I'd say Northeast Florida, uh, but yeah, we'll cover national stuff too if it's pertinent to us. Mm -hmm. If it, if it makes sense to you, then that's what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. so. Welcome back, beautiful people. 
Uh, we have here with us today Mr. Joe Snowberger, publisher of Liberty Life magazine. Good afternoon. Glad you could come here. Appreciate the invitation to see a veteran like you. And, oh, and thank you for your service. Oh, and based upon it being the first week of December, I want to lead off with Beat Army. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he would do that. <laughs> well, my father is Navy, too. Okay. So we're okay. We're okay. Listen, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you uh, to start off with, Liberty Life. Um, it's uh, gone into, what, how many issues so far? Uh, I think you're holding in your hand the 11th issue. Issue number 11, hyper-local, on base, in town, pro-military. So what folks don't understand, a lot of folks don't realize that in northeast Florida, Camden County, southeast Georgia, there's right. seven counties that have the second largest population of military veterans and family members in our country. There's higher veteran populations, there's higher military populations, but when you combine them, one out of four of every resident, one out of four, 20, four, you know, 20 to 25% of us right. are directly connected to military service as either being active duty, a DOD, a veteran, which includes whether you served two years and got out or you, you're a retiree lifer. Right. And then think about each one of those populations has a family associated with it. So one in four of us, and that's a, that's a significant chunk of the population. There's no community resource for that genre of the population. The base newspapers um, don't exist anymore. If they did, they still only focused on that particular base or and, and, and that particular command. There's not a community service, a community uplifter, a, a, a something that pulls the communities in. So that's what Liberty Life is. Liberty Life is a media house that supports, uh, informs, and helps the uh, military veterans and their family um, from all kinds of different angles. And, and many of the uh, advertisers in, in Liberty Life are uh, veteran-owned businesses? Uh, uh, it's a half and half. Half um, and half. We have dubbed, we have service marked the area. It's called the Liberty Coast. We're known as the first coast. Right. But quite frankly, it was too cumbersome to say the largest military veteran population in northeast Florida and southeast Georgia. And it just <laughs> dawned on me that all these folks' entire career is focused on allowing us, the, the, the rest of the community, to live the Liberty life. So right. the Liberty Coast fell out naturally. Mm -hmm. Most of the advertisers that we have are not necessarily veteran-owned businesses at this time. Mm -hmm. They are businesses who recognize, first of all, they're pro-military in the sense mm -hmm. of people who are serving their country. But they recognize when I can market to one in four of the population, sure. when they want to buy something or go somewhere, that's a viable marketplace for me to be in. Absolutely. It's an economic driver with Absolutely. so many military personnel and veterans and their family members sure. you know, in, in the northeast Florida, southeast Georgia area. Uh, it's definitely an economic sure. driver. So yeah, I, I did a 24-year Navy career, and I moved here 20 years ago at the end of my career. And I had been in the defense community world for a long time. Um, I had a lot of civilian stuff. I shout out to Downtown Vision. I was the first director of operations and launched the Downtown Ambassador Program. Mm -hmm. um, I ran a college campus in here, which most of my students were uh, adult military folks trying to finish their degree or get their, that next step segment. So when they got out of the military, because everybody will get out of the military. Everybody transitions from military service some point, yeah. into the civilian community after two years or after 30 or 40. And so those skill sets and preparing for that is something you should always be working on. But in all of the and also I, get, I worked for 10 years at trying to bring a Navy warship to downtown Jacksonville and establish an attraction. Not so much just for the military aspect, but some what a lot of your guests talk about, the overall impact on the community. A warship downtown would have given us a platform for have kids on board to get STEM education and STEM training. It would have been sure. a riverfront platform to do all the, the events. But so that we've been involved in how the military connects with, the, with Duval and the seven other counties pretty closely. But Liberty Life's whole purpose is to provide relative, relatable, referential, useful information to one in four of us that live in this community and help them out. We're, we won't be so much a newspaper in the sense of, I'm going to tell you what cool job fair happened yesterday that you missed. 
<laughs> right. I want to tell you two weeks in advance and remind you through social media and the website that it's coming and then help you get prepared with where to go to get your resume squared away, where to go talk to and do some networking and how to prepare to go hit that um, job fair for your sure. transition coming out. And other community services too, where, oh, where families can go and get help well, with one thing or another. We want to cover the gambit. First mm -hmm. of all, six to 8,000 new military families move into the Liberty Coast every year to take on the duty assignments that are here. Sure. This is a growing military community. You have Kings Bay Navy base up north, strategic submarine base, very unique mission. 70% of the people at the station at Kings Bay live in, in Florida. So they transition. You have Mayport and the Coast Guard and all the resources up in the Mayport neck of the woods. Surface Fleet, they're now going to be the home for the 737 unmanned sized reconnaissance planes that will be flying out. Their mission's growing. That fleet's growing, whether we get a carrier or not, way down the road. But the ARGs are growing, the LCSs are coming in and all that. NAS Jacksonville, always growing at, at a size. Right. But people don't realize we have all the other services here, too. The Air Force is represented at the Air Force because the Florida Air National Guard's 125th Fighter Wing has first response F-15s and soon F-35s as a defense mechanism. They not only work for the governor as his state militia, but they work for the Air Force and actually do real live Air Force deploy missions. The Marines have a presence at Blunt Island logistically, yep. and nobody realize, very few people realize that there's amphibious um, deployment ships stationed right next to the zoo up off of Hexter Drive uh, for that mission. The Army's represented. Camp Blanding is a massive facility. It's huge. Yeah. The Joint Training Center for both the state, regular Army comes here for a lot of training. The Coast Guard has a whole sector headquarters here. The spaceport even has a smidgen of a toehold here out at Cecil Spaceport and Cecil Airport. And one of the favorite things I like to say is there are seven and three quarter military bases in the area waiting for somebody to ask. <laughs> three quarters of a military base? What's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cecil Commerce Center and Cecil Field close as a master jet base back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. There's eight military commands and us DOD entities operating still out there at Cecil. They just don't have a gate around them that opens and closes and nobody else right. is allowed out there. Air National Guard's out there, the Coast Guard's out there, the Special Forces are out there, Boeing's out there. There's a lot of uh, defense work going on. So across that sector, um, Liberty Life helps those new families that are being transferred in here. We connect them to realtors and helping them find their home. We're mm -hmm. working with Duval County Public Schools and helping them, where can I go to figure out where, how to get there? We're helping military transitions out of the service. We connect employers to veterans. We provide all kinds of resources. Where do I go? How do I transition what I'm doing? We also, back to what you thought it was really about, is veteran services. Oh, my God. There's hundreds of veteran services available, but they all typically focus on what they do every day for their niche audience. And then for the poor veteran who's looking to find out what the resources are, Liberty Life gives them one place to go to maybe connect the dots. We, we have a list of resources in every issue that change with the calendar or the tide. And then you hit on it right off the bat veteran-owned businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, the small business uh, neck of the woods here in Jacksonville is alive and thriving. Oh, yeah. You know, your artists are small business. So it's amazing the military and veteran-owned businesses that are thriving here in Jacksonville. So we want to shine the light on them. We want to help them generate business. And we want to draw people's attention to the resources that are here and the different skill sets mm -hmm. that, that are people bringing. A lot of our readers don't even know about the military assets that are here. So also in each issue, we attempt to share with them something cool about the Liberty Coast that they had no idea what was going on, that they knew that that was going on. You meet a kid in the grocery store and you find out at 23 years old, he's driving this uh, Amphib vehicle that has 25 combat ready Marines in the back of it. He drives it out the back of a perfectly good warship floating off the beach <laughs> into the water. Right. It motors to the beach. He drives it up on the beach and then drives those Marines five or six miles, clicks into the battle. This is a 23 year old kid that, 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 that's doing that, that, you, that, you, that might be your neighbor. We got some really cool folks living in our community. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and with the, uh, 
the small owned businesses and, and like you're saying, the artists and, and restaurant owners and stuff like that. There's a lot of those people that are former Navy uh, around here. Former you, military you, in uh, general. Military in general, but there's so many people I run into. Th there's artists that I run into right. all the time say, oh, yeah, I was in the Navy. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> well, like I said, one in four of us has, yeah. has been in the military, is in the military, or is a family member of that military member. Yep. So we the, um, the connection that we want out of Liberty Life, but for Liberty Life, it's paid for by advertisers. Sure. Okay, it's a free distribution. So what was surprising to me was the real impetus came from, um, and the many nonprofits that I've started at trying to connect the community between an aggregate calendar or employers to, um, uh, to veterans. It was the advertisers who knocked on me and my partner's door that said, hey, we want to reach that audience. We'll help fund the community engagement you want by starting to do some advertising. Now, we're not quite there yet. Plus, I want to share with your audience something real important because mm -hmm. your audience will, will really get into this and okay. might connect better. My partner is a guy who ran Folio Weekly for 33 years. Right. Sam Taylor is my yep. partner. Right. So Sam Taylor understands what in the community and the aspects and is a great coach um, in, my, in my business partner at, you know, I'm learning to be a publisher. We're learning to edit. We're learning to tell stories mm -hmm. because my passion is connecting this, this community mm -hmm. and getting these folks that have given us the Liberty Life, all the resources, and, mm -hmm. and get them talking to each other and share those resources. So the same folks that brought you Folio Weekly for 33 years and, and those relationships is the partner with Liberty Life. So I hope that gives a good solid ground to the community mm -hmm. work that we're trying to pull. Oh, absolutely. It was, you know, uh, in, in one aspect, you know, a lot of the community was sad to see Folio fold, you know, at the beginning of the year. But then luckily, you know, John Phillips stepped up sure. uh, and started 2.0 uh, and... Uh, the, Whereas Folio the, will go towards what the Folio does as the community paper. Absolutely. We absolutely. have such a large sub-community oh, yeah. that we're doing the same thing. So there's mm -hmm. aspects. So you told me to look at that camera when I wanted to talk <laughs> to the people. Yeah. Liberty Life is a platform for you to be a contributor to telling the stories. If you know somebody's military veteran experience or story that should be told or yours should be told, LibertyLifeMedia.com wants to hear from you. If you're a writer or a contributor, you've got to get a voice out. Liberty Life Media wants to hear from you. If you're a business and you want to reach 25% of the Northeast Florida audience, Liberty Life wants to hear from you. Absolutely, so. absolutely. And you got one of uh, Jacksonville's leading journalists in the room tonight. Absolutely. And Shelton Hall is with us every, every episode. An, I'm honored to be in the Shelton house. I really am. <laughs> And of course, as you know, Shelton still writes for Folio 2.0 too. Absolutely. Uh, so, hello, Sam. <laughs> say hi to Sam. Listen, it was it was a joy to have you here. I'm so glad you could take some time out of your busy schedule to come join us. I appreciate you inviting me. I hope we can get you out again sometime. I'd be happy to keep you updated with things going on that your viewers might not normally see or be no, and know about. Well, the last time Shelton and I got together, um, we had mentioned, uh, let's try to get Sam over here sometime. Absolutely. Sam's out doing the hard stuff. It's selling ads. So <laughs> that's what we need Sam out there to go do so we can have a Liberty Life. So take care. Cheers. All Beat right. Army. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we'll be back with Shelton Hull in just a few minutes. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is uh, TV Sheldon Hall, and I'm joined by Hope Hope McMath, the uh, proprietor, uh, the raconteur behind the Yellow House Project and so many other wonderful things. Hello, Hope. Hey, Shelton, how are you? I'm pretty good. Good. Thank you for joining us. Glad to be here. I was, you know, I was already sitting here talking to you, and then you showed up. So I did... <laughs> I'm glad I had that pre-presence. Yeah, you know, yes. we were going to do one of those like like international movie things where I'm just. So tell me about, oh. yeah, I just got like the sort of reaction shots. But um, let's start by talking about Yellow House. Um, 
you start Yellow House three years ago? Mm -hmm. A little over three years. Well, gosh, who knows? The calendar's so weird now, right? Mm -hmm. At least since time. I guess about three and a half years ago. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this has been a weird year for, um, you know, everything, especially mm -hmm. things like art galleries where mm -hmm. public gatherings were a thing. Like, I mean, since this whole pandemic started, like, I've been to, like, the Comer, like, once. Yeah. Been to the Mocha once. Yeah. I haven't been to Cork or Yellow House at right. all since all this happened. Like, right. how is that? A, and I know you're tight with, like, Babs Lab and yep. Cork and all that. Like, that section over there, mm -hmm. like, how you guys been holding out uh, during this situation? So, you know, I think it varies depending on who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, we're obviously all um, closed for the most part to mm -hmm. the public. That doesn't mean the work isn't continuing. Yeah. Um, so Yellow House, we still remain closed mm -hmm. um, because the intimacy of our space, which is one of our strengths, also means that you can't be there in social distance. Yeah. Uh, and for me, it defeats the point of having a space like that where only one or two people can ever be in there because yeah. we are about people sharing space together yeah. and sharing conversations about what they're seeing and what they're feeling. Oh, and yeah. so... Um, Babs Lab, she just um, sort of re-sparked mm -hmm. and is now doing some of her things outside in the uh, courtyard there at Cork, mm -hmm. which is um, terrific. And, yeah. and, uh, and she's figured out ways to do that. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we had to cancel Open Studios at Cork this year, yeah. which was a super bummer because mm -hmm. uh, that is a huge... It's always one of the fun, most fun things about most the fun year. Things. I always recommend mm -hmm. it to people, like, go out, have a couple of cocktails, you know, grab a bite, and then go out to Cork and yeah. just hang out, yeah. run into people. It's one of the best days of the year, mm -hmm. not just for the artists, but for the people that we get to engage with. And so that was a real loss, mm -hmm. um, both, I think, emotionally for a lot of people, yeah. financially for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do know, you know, most of the artists in Cork, they're, they're kicking it. They're still they making that. and creating, and even if they're not actively creating, mm -hmm. they're um, reflecting, thinking, taking care of themselves, mm -hmm. and that's part of the creative process. So um, for Yellow House, our work takes so many different forms, mm -hmm. and it takes even more forms now, yeah. that, that we're active, we're busy, mm -hmm. but just in a really different way. Well, uh now, as, a, as it relates to artists, like, say, the people working at Cork, you know, we see a lot of people doing the murals and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The way the pandemic has changed, like, say, the economics of the art world, how do artists, what are artists and gallery owners doing to continue to make money in this era when they can't make money in the way they're used to doing it traditionally? Well, the good news is so many artists were already adapting into a world of not being reliant on a gallery system. And of course in Good. Jacksonville, yeah, yeah. if you're reliant on a gallery system, you're in big trouble. Mm -hmm. um, and so social media plays a huge role in that, you know, artists really raising uh, visibility for the work that they do and putting it out there, um, you know, well beyond their geographic boundaries. That of course was already happening. So that is for people who were doing that before, they tend to be doing pretty well right now. Um, and for a gallery like Yellow House, um, the selling of artwork was really always to benefit the artist, mm -hmm. not so much the gallery, because we're not really a for-profit yeah. gallery in the traditional model. You know, we're a social justice organization. Mm -hmm. So the best thing we can do is to shine a light on the artists mm -hmm. who are doing good work, especially doing work that seems to be especially relevant during this particular time, mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and trying to connect those folks with people who... Um, still have money and are still buying art. I mean, mm -hmm. the fact is, the economy has hit some people really hard. Yeah. And other people are banking. Yeah. I mean, some people, people are having their best year whew, ever. They're having their best year ever. They didn't send their kids to that big old fancy camp during the summer because yeah. they were all closed. They're not jetting off to Europe. They're not. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I've already replaced every roof on every piece of property I have. Yeah. You know, I've got all this money. So there are people still buying art. Mm hmm. Now, you mentioned nonprofits earlier, and uh, speaking of uh, not for profit, let's mm -hmm. talk about Lot J. No, kidding. <laughs> uh, uh. I, like, um, let's talk, I w want to ask you about the cork thing yeah. and that whole area there. From an economics, eco you know, we know the cultural and political impact mm -hmm. of the cork. Oh, like 10, 
Over 10 years, mm -hmm. 10, 15 years they've been doing it? It's so. about 10 years, and yeah. I should know that number better. Mm -hmm. It's it's give or take. Like the mm -hmm. the number of people that have, and I've spent a lot of time there, the amount of talent that's gone through that area, mm -hmm. like like just talk about the just the impact of Cork. The people, think about all the people have had studios at Cork and what that has meant to the broader art scene in Northeast Florida. Well, it's huge, right? I mean, when all of a sudden uh, you had this space um, where artists not only could have a space to do their own work mm -hmm. and to percolate work, but to also connect to other artists um, that would sort of lift everyone up. Um, I mean, it's been it's been tremendous because not only what happens in their studios, but how those artists then integrate into community yes. and impact community, mm -hmm. economically, socially, politically, spiritually, you mm -hmm. know, all of those. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a big deal. And for a lot of artists, their work tends to move up to different levels as they have a dedicated space to do their work. You know, yeah. I think about somebody like Erin Kendrick, mm -hmm. who I'm just a huge fan of. Yeah. You know, before she was able to have that dedicated space, you know, she's sort of working on her work at home and trying to figure it out. All of a sudden, she has a, she has her own studio, and her work gets bigger, it gets bolder, uh -huh. right? Um, uh, she feels more focused on it. Um, and after she had her exhibition at Yellow House, she did really well. She sold out that show. Wow. Um, she was able to then get a bigger studio space. And I think about the impact of the other people in Cork in having Aaron there. Yeah. And that's just one example. And seeing that there's a path to that's success. Right. That's right. And just benefiting, all of them benefiting from each other's brilliance mm -hmm. uh, makes this a better city for all of us. Absolutely. You know, this year has seen a lot of people kind of being forced to make changes, being forced to like take up new careers, go yeah. outside their comfort zone. You did that, but you did it by choice. Like you, you know, you had a spot, like you could have just been there at the cover and yeah. just done that. Like, yep. you know, you would have had no problems, but you chose as a matter of principle, as I understand it, yeah. to step away and to do something, um, you know, to go outside of your own comfort zone. Yeah. Um, just tell me about like psychologically and emotionally what that process was like for you. And now a few years later, mm -hmm. looking back on that choice, how do you feel about it? Right. I mean, we were, we're all marked by these experiences that we have along the way in mm -hmm. our journey. And um, that one for me was a big one just because, you know, I'm, I'm a bit old fashioned in the sense that I had worked at the same organization for 22 plus years, you know, in the city where mm -hmm. I was born and raised, yeah. like super unusual um, and really loved my time at the Comer. I mean, it was just um, it. it it was who I was and still is very much who I am. Mm -hmm. um, when I made the decision to leap out of the comer, mm -hmm. um, it was it was difficult uh, to say the least. And uh, because it was it was leaving what I knew, yeah. um, it was leaving security. Um, it was leaving in a way identity because whether I liked it or not, I was very. Yeah. My identity was very much about my Absolutely. role at the comer, mm -hmm. and so um, so it was it was w definitely walking through the fire. And the first year after I left there, um, I knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't know the shape of it. Um, and when that started to become clear, mm -hmm. uh, it was really exhilarating. It was also terrifying. Because again, I do not consider myself entrepreneurial at all. Mm. If I was, I wouldn't have been in the same institution for 22 years. Sure. And so, um, so that process of of sort of healing and you know uh, tending my own wounds mm -hmm. and uh, and and the drama around that and taking some time to rest and repair mm -hmm. so that I could then reimagine was. Um, was really healthy. I mean, it sort of felt like shit at the time, but mm -hmm. it, it was really healthy. Uh, and I think a lot about that now um, and how I think I'm so much more ready for this strange year we've been in in 2020 yeah. because of what I went through four years ago. Yeah. Like, I, I like this was like nothing. Mm -hmm. It was like, so. Um, That's how you know you're weird. Like, if you can look at back at 2020, like, eh. It's all right. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, the pain of mm -hmm. the difference is four years ago, the pain was like mine. Yeah. 
now the pain is collective and global. And that's worse. Way worse. It's wor it sucks way worse. seeing other people having problems and you, there's nothing you can do to help it's them. It's way worse. Yeah. And so, but I now realize um, more and more with each month, like the importance of having the kinds of spaces that Yellow House ha is trying to become, mm -hmm. you know, which is a, a space where we really blur the lines between art, community, social justice. Mm -hmm. um, and that was my goal was, you know, can I cre help create an institution um, and live a life mm -hmm. personally where the edges between education, activism, uh, creativity, personal expression, community, uh, where those edges just disappear. Mm -hmm. And um, that feels good. It's also really weird. It confuses people. Like my role at the Comer was always mm -hmm. very easy to define. Yeah. A lot of people see what we do at Yellow House and they say, wait a minute, are you an arts organization? Are you social services? Mm -hmm. Are you food distribution? Are you education? Like, what are you? And my answer is always like, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. we're, 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 we're a little of all of that. Yeah, I remember talking to someone around the time the whole, your situation happened. They were like, yeah, yeah, Hope stepped away. She, she walked away from all this, you know, because she wanted to be an ally to the community. And they're like, she's just like John Brown. I'm like, <laughs> They're like, well, I don't know. I don't know if she's just like John Brown. And they're like, well, but Hope doesn't have any guns. And I'm like, that's true. That's if she true. Had, if I had guns. If you had your own militia, I could see If you. I was well armed, yeah. I, I would own that better. But, you know, but there is truth in that. So in a, I recognize now more, actually, even than when I was in the role at the Comer, mm -hmm. the difficulty when you're in those positions of truly being your whole self. Yeah. Um, and being that accomplice to others in the community, mm -hmm. um, there was so much tension around that. Yeah. Um, and not with everybody, mm -hmm. but with those that really held the power. Mm -hmm. the, the director of a nonprofit doesn't hold the power. No. Um, it's a fundraising. It is. And, and there were people who really felt threatened by my very vocal stances mm -hmm. on race, yeah. on immigration, on gender liberation. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew that when I started waking up every day thinking about how do I live in this world and do right and stand yeah. with other people, I began to recognize I could not do that right. at the institution I was at. And that's not really judgment of that institution. It just meant I had grown in one direction. Yes the institution's growth path was not necessarily going to be in that direction mm -hmm. and that meant the marriage was over. Now, and you you know, you're kind of a pioneer locally as far as the concept of allyship, you know, which has become a really big thing in this over the last year or two in this mm. Trump era, especially this year. Mm. How has that evolved? Like, you know, as a white person mm. supporting people of color, you know, in the in these efforts, like how has have your tactics or your philosophies oh changed uh, during this I situation? feel like it changes daily. Um, I look, I look back a couple months ago, a couple years ago, mm -hmm. and and see how really sloppy, messy, awkward the My work problem? is. Oh. Just, just um, you know, thinking you're doing right when you're not. Mm -hmm. um, early on, suffering from. Uh, the white savior complex, which I would have never thought that that's what I was doing at the time, but I absolutely was. Mm. Uh, and I've just been so fortunate that I've had people so willing to call me out <laughs> and call me in, yes. more importantly, yes. Yes. call me in mm -hmm. to say, love you, but girl, <laughs> that ain't right. You're a mess. And um, I mean, the learning has just been it's been profound and, and transformational. And, um, and I early on realized that this was a long haul kind of thing. Um, and it's one of the reasons I have issues with just the concept of allyship because, you know, we, it, it's too easy for us to move in and out of it. Right. Yeah. I can choose to turn that off at mm -hmm. any moment. Right. Yeah. And, um, and that means there's incredible privilege in that. 
um, that's uncomfortable. And so, but it's also an, an asset, like you know, weaponizing privilege. Oh, absolutely. And I do recognize that. And and some of those lessons come from my time at the Comer, you know, because we were able to do some amazing things yes, there. Yes, you were. At a time that uh, that work was really hard. I mean, now all of a sudden you have museums and corporations and all these organizations putting out statements, you know, proclaiming solidarity with black lives. And I look at most of that as so hypocritical and most of it is very thin and is proving itself to be, mm. you know, seven, eight, nine months in to this year's racial reckoning. Yeah. You have a lot of people um, diluting that message and people um, who, who chose not to really commit to doing the hard work. Um, and the beauty is I think the people see right through that. Um, and uh, so, so there's this conditioning that's sort of required to like stick with it, mm -hmm. um, to take the hits, to know when to shut up and sit down and move into the background. And when you can weaponize mm -hmm. what you bring to the table to bring something good to others. So, mm -hmm. no, I don't have John, John Brown's guns, but um, hopefully um, have learned enough over the last few years to make what I do know work on mm -hmm. the behalf of others. If you ever need guns, I got two right here. I love that. I'll um, call on it. We got a couple of minutes left. Okay. I want tell me real quick about the food thing that you're working on. So yeah, one of the things that happened during this pandemic mm -hmm. um, was that a good friend of mine, Angela Tenbrook, she runs yeah. some farms mm -hmm. in town, um, uh, mostly run by women, uh, really all run by women, and she was turning her energy into marrying local farmers who were having a hard time finding people to take their food. Mm early in the early months of the pandemic, you know, farmers were having to like almost like turn yeah. over their crops yeah, because yeah. the distribution was so screwed up mm -hmm. at that point. She was trying to marry that concern with the fact that people were going hungry in larger numbers. And so I decided with Yellow House being closed that I would take one day a week to go down to her farm in Hastings and try to be useful. Mm -hmm. Um, and it ended up marrying up with other work we were doing. And so I go and trade my labor down there and I come back to Jacksonville with a truck full of food that I then distribute to the families that we've been working with on Ken Knight Drive, mm -hmm. to refugee families, most of whom live over on the south side. And we now have a produce stand once a week um, on the front lawn of Yellow House for the neighbors who have allowed us to invade their community. Awesome. Now, if people want to be involved in that, or do they want to come out mm -hmm. to Yellow House in general, where is it at? How do they get in touch with you? So we're located um, on King Street, 577 King Street. Right now, we're closed, but mm -hmm. we're getting ready to do a really cool community-engaged art project on our campus, so mm -hmm. you will want to know that address. Excellent. Um, follow us on social media under Yellow House Art, both Instagram and Facebook, and our uh, website address is yellowhouseart.org. Um, and it's me and some mighty volunteers. So if you reach out to us, I see it, right? So call, email, um, message us, uh, uh, do messenger to uh, get to us. And we have opportunities for people to stay engaged even while we're physically closed. Fantastic. And uh, you're physically closed. We are physically open here at the Contrast Project. Uh, we're wrapping up this segment now with Hope McMath. She'll be back many more times to talk about so. much more stuff, all types of things yet to come. <laughs> and we'll be back uh, with something. I don't know. Thanks. <laughs> Yellow House, in a way, has a very strong connection back to the work I was doing at the Comer, clearly. Um, but after I left the museum and I knew I really wanted to do uh, work through the arts that connected with neighborhoods and social justice and racial equity, and so Yellow House came basically because I saw a gap, that there wasn't an organization just focused on how art and social action came together. So since it didn't exist, it was like, well, if this is the work I want to do, whether I want to or not, it sort of feels like I'm going to have to create it. Mm -hmm.
The place was filled with families, with uh, community leaders, with students, with people black, white, and brown, people who are really engaged in the arts, people engaged in social activism, and just people from the neighborhood. So, you know, a lot of the work in starting this, more so than I ever even realized, but starting a business and an organization and what was somewhat of a new idea in Jacksonville, though it's not new in other places, um, had been really intense, you know? It was like really sharp focus on getting the business side of things ready. So by opening night, to be able to finally open the building and unveil the idea around Yellow House to so many people was, it was really inspiring. And I was shocked how many people showed up because you know, it's also one of those things, anytime you plan an event or a party, the biggest issue is, is anybody gonna care? Is anybody gonna be here? And the place was jammed. But I really hope it becomes a place where people um, convene, where people connect on a regular basis. Um, and it, that it becomes a hub for collaboration and has an impact right in our communities and our neighborhood. Because uh, they say cleanliness is next to godliness. That's what they say. And godliness is according to <laughs> according to mathematics. <laughs> godliness is also next to cleanliness. That's right. You know, and and I and I speak about this in a serious way. We joke, we kid about the pandemic, but it's true. Like I'm fortunate in life that this infectious disease stuff that's happened this year in 2020 has not affected me that directly. You know, and I've made my living shaking hands with people. Like I was always into the washing hand stuff and I really care about that. Like I don't care about the politics. You can agree, disagree, whatever that's, you know, we'll talk about that next year. But right now in December, 2020, I really want everybody watching this, whether you, whatever your viewpoints are, just take this time now, take this month to relax, drink some tea, take like a good like hot bath with some Epsom salts, take the time to talk to your family, reach out to your family, talk to them, especially if you've got people in your family and in your life that you don't have a consistent relationship with right now right now is the moment to go and call them call them text them reach out to them you know because this this is a tough world you know it's I mean I'm beautiful like a newborn lamb but I still find it hard <laughs> I still find it hard to deal with these times you know the things that I have things that bother me and it's <laughs> things that I have bad moments, but it doesn't, I'm always okay. What hurts me more though is when people that I care about are having a difficult time and there's nothing that I can say or do to help them mm -hmm. in that moment, you know, when it's like, I feel all the times I feel like, oh my God, like. I wish I was rich so I could just pay their rent yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah. You know, I wish I was rich so I could pay my rent. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that sort of thing. This, this year, life is always hard. Life is always difficult. And those of us who are alive right now, you people in your 20s and your 30s and your 40s and your uh, 50s and 60s and your, uh, you know, your, you people have not been born yet, you know. Shout out to the 100 years from now. <laughs> Shout
shout out to those of you who are writing your uh, college theses about uh, all this right now. We have to uh, understand that we're all nuts. This world is crazy. <laughs> this country is crazy. No one deserved this. Like the people that have been hurt, whose lives have been destroyed right. this year, none of those people had it coming. They didn't deserve it. It's unfair. It's unfair. They like it sucks so much, you know. And thankfully, it hasn't hit my family that hard. But like, I've kn I know people. Yeah. I know so many people that lost a parent, lost a brother, sister. I know people that lost both parents. It it sucks. It's fucked up. But what you got to realize now is if you're watching this now, you're still here. We're on the cutting edge. Like, yep. All that's history. This is the future right now. So go for it. Get it. You know, whoever you are watching this, you know it. You know what's in your heart. You know that your instinct is correct. Your heart is correct. Yeah. Dude. So if I say if I with, with the relevant app, I can inside of my vibe, I can say, yo, I got a show today. Oh, come to this address and you can see this show. And when you get to that address, I put my my uh, messaging within a mile radius. And when you get in it, you hear the other message that my show is actually in this warehouse over here. There's no walker buys, walker ups. Yeah. They have access to you and what you're doing. Um, I think that's the dopest thing about this relevant app based on the local thing. Hey, yo, Ma, what's up? Just trying to put you up on Relevant, yo. It's a new community chat app. I partnered with them to develop the Uplift, bro. We're off that other book, bro. We're doing the Victor Green style now, yo. Download ASAP. Okay, cool, I'll download it now. Yo. All right, yo. so I downloaded Relevant. What is the Uplift? It's a new chat platform for the black community, exclusively on Relevant. So what if I wanted to get my grub on with the black-owned restaurant? Absolutely. In the category called Eat Up, you can find all the black-owned restaurants and grubbing in there. So what if I wanted to go higher with my education at a historically black college? Of course, you can find it inside of the Wise Up category. You can also politic with other black professionals on Power Up a location-based community to do business and collaborate ideas. We got Speak Up for black community activists, Rise Up for career seekers, and Coming Up for talented rising black stars, all in one place. And the content changes based on the location of your city. Yo, it's going to be the next big thing. Find, Find your, your vibe, vibe. Exclusively, exclusively on Relevant. Relevant. Well, Shelton, it was another great show today. Uh, we had some fantastic guests. I want to remind everybody out there, our core audience and everybody alike, to find us on Facebook and on Instagram. Like, share, and comment. Go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. Smash that subscribe button. Isn't that right? That's right. Smash that subscribe button. Twerk that button. You twerk it, you smash every button you have available <laughs> to you in life. That's right. And, Life only and, gives you so many buttons. That's right. So and, you smash them. And we want you to we want you to continue to share, mm -hmm. continue to be involved in the show. And until next time, peace. Peace.